Kia has revealed its three-row electric crossover, the EV9, and while it looks great, I have some reservations going forward. But after we're done talking about the EV9, we have a lot of industry of auto news to cover, such as BMW, Volkswagen, and Porsche's electric vision. So let's get into it. The EV9 has been revealed, and we'll go over the images here in a little bit, but just keep in mind, it will make its digital global premiere later this month, meaning we don't have full product information until a few more weeks from now. Now they've kept the design right online with the concept. It doesn't look that much different. Now, I think the overall proportions are amazing on this truck. And I call it a truck because it does look like more like a traditional SUV, even though it's on the eGMP platform, it's on a skateboard platform. The LED lights are a little overkill on the front and the back. I think they could have just cut either the top portion off or the bottom portion off. The, the third leg of it, essentially, or the third line of it looks overkill in my opinion. But I think once I see it in person, I'll probably love it. And then if you look from the side, my gosh, this thing is just stunning. I like how the door handles suck into this. I kind of like the EV6. The windows look nice and big, so you can get a good amount of light coming in. It looks like an old school body on frame SUV. And here we are on the lights on the back. I think they could just do without this portion in the middle. I mean, it looks a little bit circuit boardy, a little futuristic, but honestly, it looks still a little bit overkill in my opinion. But maybe I'm just... Uh, giving it too much of a hard time here. But in the front, you can see these air dams that close off at the bottom here um, to make it a little bit more slippery at highway speeds. And the interior, you're not going to mistake for anything other than a Hyundai or Kia product because this is how they do the screens. They have a 12-inch screen typically on this side and a 12-inch screen over here. But check this out. It looks like they put an additional screen in the middle here, maybe a 6-inch screen that gives the illusion that there is a full I don't know, 30 inch screen that goes across here. Maybe there is, but honestly, just looking at it from here, it looks like they have an additional screen here in the middle. Climate control is very limited here, and it looks like you just have maybe temperature and fan control. It's really hard to tell. These images aren't the highest quality. Now we have a little accordion desk here that allows uh, you to open it up for cup holders. You have your USB C's down here and USB A's. Actually, can't tell, but they look like USB C's. You also have ambient lighting in the center console here, as well as on the doors on the top and the bottom. And you also have it on the dash here behind the screens. Now, gosh, the side profile of this thing is just immense and very strong. And they're beautiful. I really like the designs on it. Typically, Hyundai and Kias just go a little over the top with too much detail. And other than the, the daytime running lights, as well as the, the rear taillights, I think it's very minimal yet futuristic at the same time. Okay, we have a little bit higher resolution here for the climate control. You have a volume knob, actually a, a rolly scrolly knob, kind of like we see on Genesis products. And then we have the fan control on the left side. You also have different mode, but you have the dual climate control here. What do you think of the switches instead of rotary dials? I know they don't have a lot of circular themes on this. It's a very angular car. Uh, so I guess, I guess it looks really good, but in terms of functionality, I don't know if it's going to be quite as good as knobs. The new steering wheel looks pretty good to me. I like the oblong nature of it. Um, it's definitely unique and I like this portion at the bottom you can just rest your hand on. So I'm digging the steering wheel. The seats, I am not digging, okay? I don't mind the fabric headrest here. I think that's gonna, you know, the back of your head won't get as sweaty, but I don't, I, I think the, the minimal two-tone here, it just doesn't look that premium to me. And I know it's not a luxury car, but this thing will be fetching lu luxury car prices. Now, here's one of the cool things. You can flip the seats around in here. Um, and if you look, these seats are actually on a bump. Interestingly, they're not on the floor. They're, they're not sitting as low as uh, the captain seats here. So this is a six-seater model. And I would assume that there are seven-seater models where you have an additional seat in the middle. But on those models, you won't be able to flip the seats around. Uh, it looks like you have auto-folding seats in the back here. You also have USB Cs back there, I'm sure, as well. Um, now you can fold the, the seats flat. And it does have a flat loading surface here, even though these third row seats sit up higher than the second row seats. Another great thing about the EV9, and 
here we're expecting it to start production in 2024. If you were wondering, it's not, I don't think it's going to happen here in 2023. If it does, it might come from Korea. But if it does come from Korea, you're not going to get the EV tax credit. So it's probably worth waiting for uh, the American built EV9 that should start production in 2024. But the rumor mill is suggesting this thing is going to be expensive and it could be lacking on range. So what happened is that Kia sent out a customer survey and car and driver got their hands on it. Now we have some price figures here. We also have range and powertrain figures as well. It's supposed to start in rear wheel drive at $56,000, at least according to the survey, with the highest trim eclipsing $73,000. And at that point, I would just be spending that money on a Volvo EX90 or probably a Rivian. The range could start as low as 220 miles and top out at 290 miles, but the 290 miles is limited to the single motor option. And let's hope these rumors aren't true. I don't think this vehicle will sell well at $73,000. Here's what I wanna see. Going over to the EV spreadsheet, I wanna see all wheel drive standard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what's currently on the eGMP platform. If we look at the Ionic 5 and EV6 all wheel drive models, 320 horsepower, 446 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 on a truck that's bigger with a bigger battery in theory. We don't know any dimensions with the battery right now, but I would assume it would be somewhere around six seconds, zero to 60 if it had this 320 horsepower. This is why I'm pumping the brakes here because they could bring it to the market with a base motor of 225 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 on this thing would be well over eight seconds. And the battery is going to be larger and more than likely than what we see on the Ionic 5 and EV6. So that will also add, add more weight and make this thing slower to 60. So maybe we're talking about a nine second zero to 60 car. And I would expect it to start at like $49,000 in rear wheel drive. That's a lot of money. And in fact, gosh, just get a Telluride at that point or, or a Palisade three row crossover and you're not gonna be ever worried about range anxiety. And if we go back to the range here, if you get all wheel drive, it goes down to 260 miles. Here's the thing, if you're a soccer mom, you don't wanna have to worry about range. I know most of the time you're driving around town, but if you have kids in like a traveling team, I don't know, baseball or soccer squad, you're not going to want an electric car. It's going to be a headache to plan out your, your trips and worry about range when really the things you want to worry about when you're a soccer mom or, or soccer dad is just the kids. And also realistically in the winter time, that range will drop to maybe a little over 200. And then if you think about, hey, I need to charge when the battery gets to about 15 to 20%, your range isn't 2,200 miles in the winter, it, it drops below that even more. So I want this to be the base setup. I want it to be at $50,000 and I want there to be a, a performance model as well, maybe around 365 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque and a large battery pack. I'd love to see a 90 plus kilowatt hour battery pack so we can get that 300 miles of range. I don't wanna see this thing get more expensive than about $70,000. So I think 50 to $70,000 where it needs to be, but even then it's still pretty expensive. Assuming you can get a Telluride at MSRP, it comes in at $35,000, a little over, maybe upper 30s when you add in destination and whatnot. So. It's going to be a stretch, I think, for a lot of families, even though it looks amazing, it's going to drive great, I'm pretty sure, because all the other EGMP platform vehicles I've driven are pretty darn good. I just don't know if people who fall in love with the design would actually fall in love with the everyday use and long range usage for a people mover. All right, we got to switch gears here. BMW is cautious on 2023 because of the impending recession uh, and EV targets are expecting ahead of schedule. So they're planning to be 50% fully electric by 2030, but they're saying they could do that well before then. And they're also planning on to bring in a hydrogen car to the mix in the second half of the decade. And their profit margins this year are expected to be even higher, eight to 10% up from seven to 9% in 2022. But we're gonna switch on over to another German automaker, Volkswagen spinning nearly $200 billion to boost EV and software efforts. They want to catch Tesla and that is going to cost them a lot of money. This comes right after the announcement of the $2 billion plant in South Carolina to build the Scout pickup truck and three row, I'm assuming it's a three row SUV. And this comes right after Volkswagen announced Canada will have its first North American battery cell plant. And they are planning to begin producing battery cells in 2027. Yesterday on my main channel, I talked about how 
Honda will be producing battery cells out of their plant and mass production in 2025. So Volkswagen at least two years behind Honda, actually, even though Honda doesn't have any EVs currently on the market, we know Volkswagen and Audi have quite a few. Now, Porsche just came out with a big annual press conference talking about financials and other things. But I think the biggest news coming out of this is uh, the all-electric Cayenne. This is supposed to come on the market by 2026. The all-electric Macan will be coming uh, in 2024. And the electric 718 is planned for the middle of the decade. So what is that, 2025, 2026 as well? And they're saying the 718 will only be available as an all-electric model. There won't be a gasoline engine variant. That's crazy. And it will also be followed by an all-electric Cayenne. I think all-electric actually makes sense for the 718. People aren't, I mean, people might take it to the track, but if they do, they could put it on a trailer to do that. And also people are driving the convertibles not across the country 99% of the time. So it's not very practical for that. So also there's small little coupes or whatever. You can get a coupe or, or a, a convertible. They're mostly driven around town. So making all electric does make a lot of sense to me. And then after the electric 718, we'll have the all electric Cayenne. And with all these electric vehicles coming to the market for them, they're hoping to deliver 80% of its new vehicles as electric models by 2030. Now, Porsche isn't stopping there like Kia. They are coming out with a three row electric SUV and it's going to be on the new SSP Sport platform with the X7, GLS, and many other luxury three row crossovers on the market. Porsche is swinging for the fences with a fully electric three-row crossover. I guess the EX90 would be one of the first vehicles that comes to mind from Volvo. This will be the biggest Porsche ever, and it will be a flagship. So it'll be one of the most expensive, maybe even more expensive than most of the 911 models. The vehicle will feature 911 inspired profile. The SSP platform is no surprise shared with Volkswagen and will feature common battery cells and software systems across a wide range of vehicles. And the SSP Sport version is expected to feature technology previewed in Porsche's Mission R concept showing 2021, including a high performance battery, a 920 volt electrical system, and oil-cooled electric motors. Well, we know, I, I'm almost positive we're getting oil-cooled electric motors on the Macan Electric coming up, but a 920 volt EV system will make it the fastest charging vehicle on the market. I wouldn't be surprised if it was solid state battery by then as well. They will build this three row behemoth at the Leipzig, Germany plant where the Panamera and Macan are built. And this should come out in 2027, right after the electric Cayenne. But that's all I have to share for you guys today. I'm very excited for Porsche and their electric SUVs. But let me know what you think about Kia's EV9. Do you love the looks of it? I'm pretty much sold on the looks, but I can't wait later this month to share the rest of the details because that's going to make or break the vehicle. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe to Kirky Cars. And if you made it this far as well, smash the like button. Have a great day and peace.